set lies. The Extroth. A rusting, burnt-out hulk, etched against the evening sky. Once proud, the steamer Alchemos lies deserted off the Western Australian coast. But there are many who believe that on board, there lurks an evil presence. They say the Alchemos is a ghost ship, a haunted ship that has brought nothing but terror and tragedy to those who've dared venture onto it. I have always described it as being a, 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 an evil ship. Definitely a, an evil ship. And Jack Sue should know. He's one of Australia's most experienced scuba divers. A man who spent decades investigating the Alchemos and its ghost. A ghost who goes by the name of Henry. Jack can't be certain, but he estimates that in the last 30 years or so, more than 20 people directly or indirectly involved with this twisted wreck have met untimely deaths. My advice is don't go. Whether they be divers or uh, photographers or whatever, um, it's not really worth the risk. For almost four centuries, this stretch of water off Western Australia has been a graveyard for ships and their crews. From the galleons of days gone by to the giant oil tankers of today. The Alchemos joined the long list of casualties on March the 20th, 1963 when she went aground on a voyage from Indonesia. From that day on, there's been calamity after calamity. All attempts to salvage her have failed. And now she sits there with only her ghost for company. It's created so much unhappiness, so much sickness, so much hardship for people who've gone broke. There just hasn't been any end of it for 27 years. This is no place for anyone with a weak heart. That diary entry was written by a young American exchange student who took what he thought was a cushy part-time job as caretaker on the Alchemos. The diary convinced Jack Sue that there was more to this ship then meets the eye. I thought this was a bit of a, a bit of a farce at first, until I started reading the diary, and this uh, young guy Wayne Morgan uh, started off the dive the diary by saying that uh, how enthusiastic he was about going out on the ship as a caretaker, because uh, he needed a, a suitable place to do some do some swat quietly. And also, it gave him the opportunity to uh, uh, put some time into his favourite pastime, that was uh, line fishing. But that easy life would soon come to an abrupt and frightening end. The young American began hearing noises at night, began feeling a presence he couldn't see. He was so scared of moving around the ship and of course the steps, he mentioned the steps above his cabin so many times that, uh, you know, it wasn't funny. 14th of July, 63, 10.15 p.m. Been down to the engine room, but never again. The eeriest place on the ship. From the time I left my cabin, I could hear footsteps following. 
I was scared out of my wits. There was no movement on the ship. It was a calm night, and all of a sudden, the doorway between the captain's cabin and the uh, and the bridge slammed shut in a hell of a force. Uh, Wayne described it as though somebody had deliberately slammed the the door, and. Uh, he got such a hell of a fright, he dropped the torch, dropped the book, and he just fled in the opposite direction. Uh, Willy nilly, he had no idea where he was going, but finished up down in the engine room and eventually found his, found his way back to his cabin. But he said he, was, he vowed and declared then he would never go out at night again out of his cabin. The noises went on and on. The young American became more and more frantic. Finally, he could take no more. He left this cursed ship and was admitted to hospital, a psychiatric hospital. Henry the Ghost had claimed his first caretaker. After studying the diary, Jack Sue knew he had to see and hear what was going on for himself. He joined up with sound recordist Graham Greenwood and one night, against their better judgment, they tried to record the noises that had driven the American to the brink of madness. When we eliminated things like the sea and noises like that, there were almost yells and screams. And that particular night, the sea was like a mill pond, so it wasn't the sea. I wasn't a superstitious man, but when I heard the tape the next day, I was very, very glad to get off that Alchemos. I, was, uh, I just don't want to go back on it again. Graham Greenwood's fears of the Alchemos linger to this day. Fears that are shared by his mate, Jack Sue. While I was lying there, I suddenly heard somebody, a sort of a moan coming from the bunk behind me. A sound like somebody rolling over in their sleep, sort of, uh, uh, and uh, I pricked my ears up. I thought I must have been hearing things. So I listened again, and sure enough, it came a second time. And I can tell you, I wasted no time getting out of that cabin because uh, I wasn't imagining things. For a time, the owners of the Alchemos employed Filipino watchmen, but they didn't last long. Again, the footsteps echoed through the night. Doors opened and closed of their own accord. Tools and equipment simply disappeared. After that, there was a young married couple who took up the challenge. She was pregnant, and heartbreaking tragedy was just around the corner. Perhaps it was Henry. Perhaps it was just a coincidence, but one night during a gale, the woman suffered a bad fall on board. The beginning of yet another disastrous episode on the Alkanos. For hours, she lay there injured, in agony, with the baby due at any moment. On shore, the rescue operation was underway, a rescue that couldn't come too soon. They eventually had to get four-wheel drives along the beach, ambulance, police officers and other emergency crews, and they finally used a rocket to fire a line across from the beach uh, and uh, rig up a line along which they uh, brought the woman off in a bosun's chair. She, uh, she was then uh, taken to hospital, of course, but uh, she miscarried and uh, a premature dead baby was was the result. They left the, the wreck shortly after. Many more caretakers were to be driven from this ghost ship. Sometimes it was the noises. Sometimes it was more specific. Cooking smells coming from the empty galley. The galley where there was no sign of food and the stove was cold as ice. 
For more than 30 years, there's been speculation on what or who this ghost called Henry might be. A medium felt there'd been a murder on board. The dead had returned to haunt the living. At one stage, a priest was called in to exorcise the ghost. Unfortunately for him, he decided to do some fishing from the Alchemos deck before he tackled Henry. The sinker came straight back to him as though someone had picked it, caught it at the other end and hurled it back and it hit him right in the middle of the forehead. And he had to be carted off to hospital to have stitches uh, inserted and uh, wasn't a very, very well man. So he never got the opportunity to, uh, I don't think he made any attempt to exercise the ghost. And to the best of my knowledge, never went back on the ship again. In Western Australia, the Alchemos and its ghost achieved a degree of fame. Or was it infamy? There were staunch believers, and even stauncher disbelievers, anxious to prove or disprove the legend. One of the sceptics was Perth radio announcer Ted Bull. Back in 1990, I thought, why don't I do something different for Halloween? And I looked around for ghost stories, for spooky houses and haunted things, and the thing that jumped out at me, of course, was the ghost ship, the Alchemos. Technically, everything was in order. Tests had proved beyond doubt there'd been no problems broadcasting from alongside the Alchemos that Halloween. Maybe Ted Bull's jokey theme music was tempting fate, tempting Henry. But as you'll hear from an actual tape of the show, things started to go wrong. Things the technicians back on shore could not explain. I think it's uh, amazing. Several times when we've mentioned Henry this morning, we've been cut off. And then when we actually swung around the boat, I thought, oh, we might lose the program because of technical reasons. It was explained to me, no, that couldn't happen. And it did as we went around the Alchemos. And it wasn't like we'd go off and stay off. It was intermittent. It would go off and then come back on. And as I said, every time we mentioned Henry the Gut, that would happen. It's almost four years since that abandoned broadcast. And now the Alchemos is disintegrating and deserted. We've all seen that uh, the ship is just about ready to collapse. I think it'll be lucky to see another winter out it's all perforated right along the water line now and once that goes uh, the rest of it will just drop and for those who've survived the alchemos and the ghostly watchman who walks her decks that day cannot come quickly enough the sooner the battered steamer goes to her watery grave the better <laughs>